Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you've just found me, my name is Jane. So today's video is all about blouses. I was thinking I didn't have many blouses until I went through my wardrobe and I found quite a few. Some of them are just like repeats, which have like made over and over in different fabrics. There's some that I've self-drafted and there's some commercial patterns that I've used. So if you fancy getting a little bit of inspiration for maybe some blouses that you've never heard of or how to wear them, then please stay tuned. If you've just found me please subscribe if you'd like to follow along with me hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video because it all apparently boosts my statistics here on YouTube so that can only be a good thing surely yeah and welcome so yeah blouses didn't think I had many blouses clearly I was wrong quite a lot of them to be fair were in the ironing pile so that's probably why I didn't think I had many blouses but I had a good ironing day the other week and ironed for seemed like forever ironed all my blouses and I realised I've got quite a few of them. I'm in the process at the minute of um, working on my next sewing pattern which will be the Ava blouse and I'll show you the Ava blouse my first draft uh, starting off with this one here on the rail. This goes linen blend I believe it is this is from Felicity Fabrics and I've also got this in the green it's got like a metallic little dot embroidered in and this is my first draft and in fact that's the front so anyway yeah so this is the Ava blouse which I'm working on and as I say this is my first draft like a wearable toile the pattern is hopefully going to be published launched hopefully fingers crossed April this year so I'm working on that and if you're interested in pattern testing I'll pop the link in the box below for the Facebook pattern testing group where you can just come along and join and then when I do have anything that needs pattern testing you can then show your interest if it's something you'd like to test. I can't promise everybody can test each particular garment but I do try and get a good selection of shapes and sizes and different levels of sewing skills as well. I really loved how it turned out, I just loved the little bow tie because I like a little bit of a bow tie detail when I'm layering with my pinny fours and I just wanted something with a deep neck detail and I've just done kind of like a keyhole neck line and gathered sleeves with a cute little cuff. Now when I'm coming to redraft it, re you know like redesign it a little bit, I'm going to tweak it a bit more and I'm going to make the sleeves quite a little bit more poofier, a little bit more billowier, if that's the right word, billowy, billowy but a little bit more room in the sleeve. So that was my first one. And then another self-drafted blouse that I did, year just gone, 2021 just gone, I wanted to draft a raglan type of sleeve blouse and I came up with the Orla, the Orla blouse. Now this was my first, my first wearable toile which I just used some homespun, cotton homespun that I had. Loved the raglan sleeves, like three quarter length sleeve with a cuff, again gathered but raglan and a little keyhole fastened at the back with a button loop. It's obviously my first draft, but it was a little bit on the short side. I mean, it's fine, it was, it's absolutely fine with some jeans. It just sits just below the belt type of thing, but it's not really long enough if you, want, if you wanted to tuck it in. So then I did this one in this gorgeous white broadery anglaise, and I did increase the length. You can see added a bit of length there, but again, I think if I come to make it as a sewing pattern, I could probably add a little bit more length on there. So versatile in that white. And this fabric, I believe, was from Felicity Fabrics again. And white, you can't go wrong with white, can you? And then I did this third version in this, I wasn't too sure at the time, in this fabric. And it's got this like copper metallic gold thread running through it. it makes it like iridescent, you can see there. And I wasn't too sure whether it was really me, but I really do like it now and it's, one of my colours, I'm near enough one of my colours, like the rusty terracotta on my colour wheel. I'll pop the card up to that video if you don't know what the colour wheel is and finding your season your season palette, which are all the colours that complement your skin. So I'll pop the card up for that because it really does, it's really good, really useful and I think it does work. It does definitely work. So my colours, this is one of my colours, I am deep deep autumn. I also added a little bit of slow hand embroidery. I mean, I'm not an expert on embroidery, but just something I designed on a piece of paper. Googled a few of the embroidery stitches, drew it, on, drew it all on with a erasable pen and then just hand embroidered around the edge of it. Um, hopefully I'd like to bring this out 
a rag or this is something similar in a sewing pattern down the line but as I say the Ava blouse is the next one coming. Three nice little blouses there that are quite nice to wear on their own, layer underneath, uh, really pretty and dead simple to pop on you know there's no there's nothing fussy about them this style at all which has been the raglan sleeve pop on and a little button at the back. So that's the Orla blouse. Moving on to this little bundle, there's quite a few here and again this is one I've drafted, this is the Edith blouse and this like the Orla blouse are part of my custom clothing section in my shop where I make them for you, these are not sewing patterns, these are custom clothing. I'm just looking at this one, I haven't ironed this very well. So starting off with the first one I made, so draft one was again in another broadery on glaze and I wanted something when I was designing this one I wanted something with a high neckline ruffle neck a bit, little bit of a, a gathered detail cuff on you know gathered detail on the end of the sleeve there and it came out pretty well and I was quite happy with that it's just got a couple of bust starts very similar in style to the Ava but obviously the neckline is completely different and as are the sleeves it's more like a ruffle on the sleeve rather than the cuff so that was version one. Version two, I made it in this 100% cotton, this floral cotton. Again, I got this from Felicity Fabrics and I adapted the sleeve. So the it's got like an elastic ruffled cuff rather than a stitched on ruffle cuff, which was a little bit complicated and long-winded to do. So I changed the sleeve slightly, still exactly the same effect, but I changed the, sl the sleeve slightly. So that was that one. I just absolutely love this fabric because it's got all those colours in it and it's just beautiful, lovely, 100% cotton. And then I went on to making my samples for the shop. So these are the two fabrics that I've got available in my shop. This is a gorgeous linen, uh, floral linen blend and it's so pretty and again it's one of, not quite like I would say it's antique white background but then it's got these pretty little flowers with blues and wines and creams and caramels so it's a good blouse to mix and match with one. and then I went with the other sample for the shop in this gorgeous gingham oh, I just love it I think it's because it's the because it's quite a big gingham style and I think it's just got a little bit of a statement piece going on there it looks great on its own you can't beat gingham if you love gingham you love gingham don't you and this again this is 100% cotton gingham and I didn't do anything different to this it's just it just that's the pattern made now I'm quite happy with where the patterns come out and obviously this one and the floral one are available to purchase if you can't be bothered to sew or you don't sew, you don't want to sew, if you fancy a nice little pretty blouse these are available in my custom made section of my shop and the final one I made is in this gorgeous cotton poplin that my lovely friend Lynn gave me this fabric and I just knew this is just so pretty that it had to be made into another Edith blouse. And again all the colours I've said before why I do love a floral because you get all those colours and you can mix and match They just go with so many things and I've worn this quite a few times, well worn. So all of these Edith blouses are all in great rotation in my wardrobe. They're just great, it's just, they're just a great blouse. So when you put them all together, just even them, that looks a lot. And then you put together these ones. I mean, we're looking at quite a lot of blouses there. Here's me thinking I didn't have any blouses. And of course, these were all in the ironing pile. And then moving on to, this is the Oak Ridge blouse by Sawholic Patterns. And if you followed me last year, you know I did quite a few of these. I absolutely loved this blouse. I love a neckline anyway on a blouse. So the first one I made was that blue one. I'll pop a picture up of you wearing it. I, did, I paired it with... Um, my mustard pinny fall. I just love those two colours together, two block colours together. I just thought they they just went together like a treat. But that fabric went really, really bitty on the arm. It's since gone to the charity shop, that one. But I've still got quite a few of them, so it's not like I'm going to miss that blouse. So then I went on to May. I think this one was the next one, and this was gorgeous art gallery fabric. And how I mean, how stunning is that fabric? And again, all the colours in it, it just gorgeous it goes lovely with I've got quite a few poppy pinafores as you can gather because obviously I have to make the poppy pinafores when I'm doing my drafting and my grading and my pattern designing so I have to make a few samples so I've got quite a few samples and it's nice to go on its own as well it's a lovely blouse if you want to liven up your jeans and you don't want to go over the top if maybe you're going out and meet your friend friend for lunch this is just lovely because it would just 
brings your outfit up to a, a another level put like jeans on it just gives that outfit a little bit of a zhuzh some nice boots maybe some nice earrings and i think it just makes a lovely lovely outfit so that's one of my favorite fabrics that one i just absolutely love that fabric so then i went on and made this one again this is in a cotton i think this is a cotton poplin i just loved the vintage style design to that i haven't worn this one as much as the others and i don't not sure why i think it's because i feel as if it doesn't go with many of my other things that i've got in my wardrobe again i mean you could wear it on its own but i think that's one of the reasons why i haven't worn it as much and then I went on and made this one and this is brushed cotton and I just love brushed cotton. It's so soft, so soft to wear. Really nice is because it's got the cuff, button cuffed, like a shirt, a shirt sleeve with the cuff. And then the last one I made for the Oakridge blouse. I should have been in commission, on commission for this, shouldn't I? It was this white one. Again, this is this is in a cotton dobby. This is from Felicity Fabrics because you can't never have enough white blouses, I always say, and I've worn this loads and loads of times, and it's managed to keep its whiteness quite well. So these are the Oak Ridge blouse. For the Oak Ridge blouse, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five of the Edith, so there's nine, and then we've got one, two, three of the Orla, so there's 12, and I've got one Ava, so that's 13 blouses so far. And then sticking with the floral, we've got this one, which is the sage, sage, is it the sage brush? Sage bush, I never remember what it's called. I think it's a sage brush. Sage brush, I think it is, by Friday Pattern Company. Again, I made this in this cotton poplin. I know everybody was raving about it last year. I thought, well, I'll have a go, I'll make it, but it's not one of my favorite patterns. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the sleeves, I'm not keen on. I don't know what it is, because I like a puffy sleeve, I like a frill, I like a ruffle, I like a neckline. Yeah, so I've worn it, but I haven't worn it much, so I'm not sure why. Or maybe it's because the fabric is a cotton poplin and it's a little bit too crisp. Probably gonna be nicer in a drapier fabric but anyway that is the sage brush top by the friday pattern company so that's blouse number 14 and then moving on to another one that i've drafted and this is in fact a sewing pattern this is the martha top and this all stemmed from a little bit of a challenge felicity fabrics gave the felicity fabrics bloggers a one meter challenge to make something out of a meter of fabric and it was all double gauze so i thought oh what can i make with a meter of fabric i thought it's obviously you can't have it can't be anything mega and it can't have big sleeves or what have you so i thought i'll make a nice little pretty short sleeve top and because it's double gauze it's got that lovely flowy drape relaxed loose type of airy fabric i always think and i came up with the martha top so it's got the gathered neckline bound neckline this is draft obviously this is my first draft straight onto the fabric so i knew i couldn't balls this up because obviously i didn't have any more fabric i mean i could have done it on some you know on some um, calico but no i didn't i went straight in and came up with this so yeah so it's gathered at the front a little tie at the neckline i mean literally this tie was cobbled together with all the scraps i could stitch together to make this tie because i was literally used every scrap of fabric and I added a tiny little frill at the bottom. It's got a high, low hem, tiny little frill, which literally was, I had to overlock on because it was a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I just overlocked it on. Yeah. And that came out really, really nice. And I was so pleased with it. And everybody said over on Instagram, oh, are you gonna bring that out as a pattern? And I did, I brought it out as a pattern. So I popped the link to the any patterns that I've got going in the box below as well if you fancy having a go at making it so that was draft one of the martha and then i popped the pictures up of the other few that i've made and some of them have gone to charity i thought there's only so many blouses i can wear and, and then the last one i made was for the launch of the pattern the lovely ladies at first for fabrics and uh, tamlin from sewn on the time she said would you like to come down and pick a couple of fabrics and make a couple of samples for your launch and we'll work together like a collaboration so me and my mum went down and lynn and we i picked a couple of fabrics and i made one for me and i made one for my mum and then i picked this linen blend in this gorgeous ditzy sprig floral pattern and it's just so drapey and obviously this is the final version all perfectly tweaked for the pattern so that is the martha top so that's 13 14 16 
16 blouses. 16 blouses on the rail so far, but this blouse has obviously since gone to charity, so it obviously was more than that. Anyway, moving on to this one. Again, this was an art gallery, gorgeous cotton lawn. I love cotton lawn because it's like buttery soft. Oh, it's just delicious. And I didn't have much fabric again, so I did uh, like a little peplum hem on this one. Um, but I thought it was just so pretty having that detail, that ruffle at the back. So that is the Dixie prototype blouse. So there we go. So that was that one. So moving on to blouse 18, I believe. This is the Fantail blouse. And I can't remember who it's by. I've completely forgot who it's by, but I'll pop the sewing revival. I think it's the sewing revival. I'll pop the details on the screen there. I can't remember, it's completely gone out of my head. And this is in a linen blend and I just loved the high-low detail but it's got that elasticated section here which I thought was something, just something really different unusual and like the high-low hem so it goes down at the back a raglan sleeve um, lovely neckline quite quite a wide neckline like an elastic casing on the end of the sleeve and, and gorgeous pretty blouse and I wear that quite a lot plain and simple so that was number 18 and 19 and 20 is my olive blouse and again this is one that I sell in the shop this is the prototype the Peter Pan collar absolutely love it this is my first attempt at putting uh, a collar on anything and I was quite pleased with how that came out and it's got the button fastening all the way down the back and I made this like just a straight straight on not too boxy type of blouse with just two bust dark gathered sleeve with a nice cuff so that was that one and then from that prototype obviously i've got to do prototypes for myself to see if what it's going to be like i then came on to this version which i sell in the shop with again with the like the peplum hem and it's so pretty it's so swishy this is in a, a viscose floral viscose with the, again with the buttons down the back peter pan collar and it's just so gorgeous and feminine and floaty so that is the olive blouse so that's 18, 19 and 20 we near the end and then we've got two gorgeous blouses which i don't wear very much with well, one i don't hardly wear all one i don't wear enough this is the bloomsbury blouse by nina lee and i made this a couple of years ago and in this gorgeous art gallery rayon this goes rayon, it's quite sheer and these gorgeous colours, it's got the ruffle all the way around there, it's got like um, a ruffle like stand type of collar and it's absolutely gorgeous to wear and because it's so floaty and drapey when I wear it and I wear it with my jeans, it just livens up your jean outfit if I'm going somewhere, don't want to go overly dressed. Not that I go anywhere to be overly dressed, but I like to get dressed up when I go out. Um, but I've hardly worn it, and I think it's because, because of this ruffle here, I can't layer it, because the ruffles gets in the way. So when I do wear it, I feel absolutely gorgeous in it, and luxurious in it, but I just don't wear it. And I think it's because of this ruffle. I just think, well, it's going to get flattened under a jacket, it's going to get flattened under a cardigan. And I think that's one of the reasons why I don't wear it, but it is a really lovely pattern as well. So that's number 19. And number 20 is this gorgeous Ida blouse, which I did for a blog post for Felicity Fabrics in this gorgeous Lady McElroy fabric. And it's just stunning, this fabric. Absolutely stunning on this dusky pink with the peacocks and the flowers. And again, this ruffle all the way around the front. And it's got like a keyhole back. And again, ruffle like a... A ruffle stand type of collar and it's so floaty and drapey uh, but the reason why I don't wear this one is because I made this when I was just towards the end of my weight loss and now it's just absolutely too big on me so I keep hanging it in the wardrobe thinking one day maybe I might take it apart and see if I can you know make it a little bit smaller it's too it's too gorgeous to give to, to the charity shop so I, thank you Jordy. Um, it's too gorgeous to give away so hence it stays in my wardrobe I will do something with it one day so that's that one so that was 20 and blouses 21 22 and 23 well 23 is in the wash but I'll pop a picture of it up here is the uh, Roscoe blouse by True Bias this is one of my very first blouses that I made I made using that floral French chambray and I wear that, that must be the most worn blouse in my wardrobe. It is in constant rotations, always in the wash. 
it irons beautiful and I just absolutely love wearing it. It's always got, I always love to layer it with a vest underneath or a long sleeve tee. I just love it. It's just one of those tops you pop on, you know, you feel, you feel half decently dressed. Um, so I made another one. I think I've made a few more, but I think they've gone to the charity. Uh, but this one is another one. And I made this in a brushed cotton and this is a Minerva fabric. And again, this is getting quite well worn too throughout the winter because it's brushed cotton. It's a really nice, easy um, sewing pattern if you want to like slowly get yourself into dressmaking. That's nothing too technical or, or it's going to put you off. So that's number 21. And then 22 is the Raglan blouse by the Friday Pattern Company. And I did this in this gorgeous mustard linen blend. I had to do a bit of a pattern hack to it because the neckline, it's, it's, I mean, the pattern does state it's quite a wide, loose uh, blouse, but it literally hangs off your shoulder. It, well, it hung off my shoulder when I tried to fasten it. So what I did was I put some gathering stitches on the top of the shoulder and pulled them in to bring the neckline in slightly. I could have gone all the way around a little bit like that one actually and gathered it in a little bit more, but I, I just pulled it in there and it was just enough. And I just added my own binding just to give it a bit of zhuzh, just to liven it up rather than just doing the same plain binding. And then I put the binding on the cuffs again, just to, just cause you can. When you're sewing, when you're dressmaking, you can do what you like. You don't have to stick to what the pattern says, you know, follow the pattern to get, make the body of the garment, but add your own little uh, personality to it. So I added the binding there and then I finished off on the hem with the same binding just to give it a bit. And this, this gets worn really well, but the only thing about this, I absolutely hate ironing it. So when it goes in the wash, it tends to stay in the ironing basket for longer than it should because I just hate ironing it. It's a bit of a crease central, but yeah, when it's ironed, it's gorgeous and then I wear it. And again, it's another great, another great top to wear with your jeans. So that is number 22 and number 23 is in the wash. So when I thought I didn't have many blouses, it's just shows you, A, I have got quite a lot of blouses, B, I clearly don't like ironing very much, and C, I've got a very bad memory, <laughs> I think. So when they're all put together, I have quite a, quite a lot of blouses, and saying that, I'm now working on the Ava blouse, so I'll be making a few more samples for myself, and obviously I'll share with you how I get along with that, I've got a couple of fabrics there. But yeah, I'm going to have plenty of blouses, I think. Can't beat a blouse. If you want something to wear, and you just got your jeans, can't beat a pretty blouse to just go with your jeans, nice belts and boots and you're ready to go. That's what I always think. So yes, yeah, so I hope I've given you a little bit of outfit inspiration, a little bit of blouse inspiration, maybe a little, a few patterns, companies that you've never heard of or a few patterns that you've never heard of. So thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. I've enjoyed going through all my blouses. I hope you did too. And um, I shall see you on my next video. Until then, bye for now.